Hi everybody, welcome to History Quest. Today we're going to head over to the museum. I found a great story about the mummy that I thought you'd all like to listen to, so why don't we head over there right now. So museums can be an interesting place. There's all sorts of great artifacts for people to see. There are statues, there are animals, there are old stone tools, there are old wooden canoes. There's a multitude of different things that people can find at a museum. Um, lots of artifacts, uh, hidden things with secrets to them, great stories tied to them. But at every museum, there's always one little secret sitting in the corner of the museum watching people walk by. One of those things that few people notice. Here at the McLeod County Museum, we have one of those. It's a Peruvian mummy, and her name is Esmeralda. The story of the mummy of the McLeod County History Museum begins around 1940. You're probably familiar with the term freak show. Today, we call them sideshows, but in the 1940s, they were called freak shows. There was a traveling circus that would come through McLeod County, and one of the ladies in the sideshow, her name was Nelda. Nelda was a snake tamer. She had all kinds of different rattlesnakes. She had diamondback snakes. She had many poisonous snakes around her. She had this ability to be able to tame and soothe the snakes. She would do other acts as well, and part of her act was the mummy. She claimed that the mummy was an Peru, ancient Peruvian mummy that had been preserved for thousands of years. She claimed that it was in much better condition than any kind of Egyptian mummy that had ever been found before. And this was the centerpiece of Nelda's sideshow. At one point in her career, Nelda was performing at Mason City, Iowa, where she ran into another performer who happened to have a mummy. Uh, we don't know the identity of this man. However, what we do know is that he had a strong thirst for strong drink, and he was out of money. So Nelda, seeing the mummy and seeing a chance to make her own show even better, decided to buy the mummy from the man. And for years, Nelda and Esmeralda toured the nation. But when Nelda retired, she kept Esmeralda with her and had her hidden away in a storage shed somewhere here in McLeod County. When, in the 1980s, the McLeod County Historical Society was building this very museum, however, she knew that the museum needed artifacts to go inside, so she donated the Peruvian mummy to the museum. Most recently, it's been in that corner, but at one time, when the museum housed artifacts in the basement of the high school, Esmeralda was there. She has always been part of the collection, and she'll continue to be part of the collection. Today, she sits in the corner of the exhibit hall, watching as people walk by, unknowing that there is a Peruvian mummy right beneath their noses. Coney Island, the world's greatest fun frolic, with its beach miles long, all peppered with people. The place where merriment is king. mingle with one million folks, folks who are just like all of us, 100,000 youngsters and oldsters, all swimming, playing, or resting, all getting their share of the sun and the fun, all refugees from the city heat, here where the beach meets the cool Atlantic, here in this great whirlpool of joy, here for a lark at Coney Island, world's biggest barrel of fun. Some take it easy on the $4 million boardwalk, while others snap pictures for proof back home that they really were part of this fun-seeking throng. With amusements here, there, and everywhere, it's hard to decide where to start. Rivers of humanity in carnival mood pour through Coney's many streets. Hurry, hurry, step this way, the strangest sight from the island. Freaks from the four corners of the world. For two nickels, one dime, a tenth part of a dollar. We've got the show if you've got the dime. 
It's just starting. So hurry, hurry. Look them over the lady without a head. There are thin ones. There are fat ones. They're all inside. <laughs> right this way, friends. You can't go home without a permanent souvenir. Now take your places. That's right. Now, very still. A big, broad smile. Watch the birdie and presto. We have Down on the Farm right at Coney Island. Speed demons of tomorrow getting someplace today. Surprises galore, cries and screams of delight in these cars that tilt and slide. From one attraction to another, the eager million moves on. Even the kiddies fly high at Coney. Everybody ride on any and every kind of gadget that means motion, speed, thrills, and laughs. Now, this looks easy, just a matter of hanging on, but hanging on to what? Faster it goes, and here they spill in every direction. It's fun for riders and spectators, too. If it turns and twists or rocks and shakes, it's here at Coney Island. And all that swings in this huge fun center is not on a dance floor. Atlantic Ocean breezes and laughter make appetites keen at Coney. Dinner time is any time, all the time. A million hungry people to feed. And the cost begins at a dime. And the youngsters have their own ideas for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. the cob, a Coney specialty, steaming ears smothered with butter and salt, with thousands of bushels enjoyed every day. But Coney Island's greatest eating invention is the Frankfurter, for it was here when the place was a sandbar known as Coney Hook that the hot dog was born. Zowie, it's Coney Island caviar. After dinner, it's time to check your weight. He'll guess within three pounds, or it costs you nothing. Coney's most famed free attraction is its Big Bathing Girl Review, where mermaids from near and far buy for honors. Those who brave the surf, and those who never go near the water, parade before big crowds and critical judges. Here they come, head over heels, upside down. What's the difference? Here at Coney Steeplechase Park, the fun never ends. So let's cool off, high up in the ocean breeze. Shows of every kind invite the crowd. Shows that make us grip our seats with excitement. Shows like this where ferocious tigers from distant lands come to quicken our blood. From the jaws of a tiger to the hoopla. And hoopla it surely is. Down she goes and round and around up and down. Going nowhere in a hurry. Action. No matter how you land, so long as it's action. Now for the good old merry-go-round, carousel, flying horses. Whatever we call them, they afford a merry world for youngsters from six to 60. Then action again on whirling discs. Or shooting the chutes at a mile a minute. Or standing on your head and seeing the world upside down in this loop of plane. to the top of the park to see the whole show, only to face a vertical drop of 90 feet. Some scream, some grow.
grow pale, but everybody shouts. It never seems to win. Drop after drop, rise and twist and turn. But at last it's happy landing, and my oh my, where have we been? Dusk descends. Night crowds pour in to swell the mighty merrymaking throng. Millions of lights frame the resort in a pattern of moving joy. Fantastic shapes pierce the crisp coastal air. The sky becomes a living lacework of brilliance and color. And long into the night, the crowds make merry with laughter, song, and fun. Coney Island. A mecca by day, a glittering spectacle by night, the dynamic funland of a nation. Howdy, folks. Well, sir, us chimpanzees. We don't like to appear in movies. Interferes with our everyday living. But when we was asked to put on a little show to help you human beings learn something about us, why, we just had to do it. No, sir, we couldn't say no. Now, them four-footed animals, they're called ponies. They ain't so bright. Otherwise, they wouldn't be letting them chimps ride them. As for my fellow chimps, well, I can't help but feel a little bit ashamed of them. They're just plain beasts, they are. Of course, it takes a certain animal-like intelligence to be able to do this. More brawn than brain, so to speak. it does amuse the kiddies, which is all modern education seems to consist of anyway. Of course, in my time, things was different. You see, the cowboy influence, inspired by them western movies, is quite the rage today. I can assure you that the chimp in his native habitat is a much more civilized critter. Well, it's a good thing that chimp can eat standing up. You know, at times, Performing here at the zoo circus, it can be a dangerous profession. As we chimps say, it's a heck of a way to make a living. Now me, I prefer the peace and quiet of the jungle. That young chimp can't seem to make up his mind. He don't know whether he wants to be a cowboy or a fireman. Give him time, he's just a babe in arms. <laughs> you know, I'm beginning to enjoy this in spite of myself. Now this chimp does a better job. the bow. I guess there's a little ham in all of us. Except in me, that is. Now here, they're rehearsing a scene for a new play. Three chimps on a horse. Oh, they've just changed the title. It's now four, uh, I mean five chimps on a horse. Oh, the tail of a horse's tail. Hope you folks don't mind if I smoke. 
persistent little varmint, ain't he? Well, reminds me a bit of myself when I was younger. Full of vim and vitality I was. Now, now who said the cavalry was dead? The chimps still keep the tradition alive, you see. Even if there ain't enough ponies to go around. In a way, of course, this is an intelligence test for them. Because they figured out how 11 chimps can ride on 10 ponies and still come out even. I could have solved it by arithmetic, but nobody asked me. Well, horses being old-fashioned, the chimps take the wheels. Hot rod hobbyists, I call them. Oh, that chimp is going to come to a bed end. Oh, bust my britches. Maybe that was designed for people that are too tired to walk in their sleep. And here, here is how to ride a bicycle when you have one wheel and no bicycle. A human wheelbarrow. Oh, excuse me, I mean a chimpanzee wheelbarrow. Now, you men can be eight feet taller than she. You almost made it, too. Well, you might call this the height of a chimp's existence. Of course, it makes for kind of a stilted life. I ain't so sure I approve. Nothing like keeping your feet on the ground, as my friend Charlie the Centipede always says. Some chimps like to live dangerous, if not very long. But don't you folks worry none. He's just as safe as he'd be back home on the top branch of a tree. I sure hope there's nothing, nothing strong in that bottle. He might get eaten higher than he is. Well, he's still there. Guess he was afraid he might break the bottle. Now, this little demonstration might prove that subway strap hangers are a throwback to chimps. Only they wasn't thrown far enough. Give a chimp enough rope and he'll smoke it. Uh, vanity, vanity, thy name is Chimp. My old friend Aesop once said, music has charms to soothe the savage beasts. It'll be interesting to see if it works on humans. Come on down the old fairway, singing it cock ba boogie in the strangest way. Come a die ay ay yay, come a die yip yay yay, singing it cowboy songs. It's just too much. This is the monkey version of the donkey serenade. He was raised on Lobo Weed. He's what you call a swing half breed. Swinging his cow cow Swing on a tree or swing to music. Us chimps are right at home. Uh, sure brings back memories. I used to cut quite a figure on the dance floor myself. Regular gay blade, I was. And this kind of brings to a close our little show in chimpanology. Oh, such bad manners. Well, now let's put an end to this monkey business. Goodbye, folks. See you at the zoo.
So that's our story about the mummy. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, real quick, I just wanted to give you an update about what's going on at the museum. Um, first is uh, just a reminder that we do have our breakfast club on the fourth Tuesday of every month at 1030. It is a members only event. Um, so if you're not a member, just stop on down. It's as low as $25 for an individual membership for a year. Plus you get six editions of McLeod, our bi-monthly magazine. Um, but at any rate, breakfast club is free donuts, free coffee, uh, free juice, water, of course. And we always have a speaker. We've had Scott Riemann. We had George Kloss from town here. We just recently had Gene Halberg. So we've always got an interesting speaker down there for the event um, so I really hope you can make it and uh, also we will be having our pork chop dinner coming up again in June uh, the date is still to be determined we've been looking at you know possibly June 1st possibly June 7th so we're gonna take the event and bring it out of the museum to an outdoor venue in town in Hutch and uh, the the venue is probably going to so the venue is going to dictate the uh, date so that's why we don't have a date settled so our in, a, in addition our pork chop dinner is coming up in june and we'll have some more news about that as well and also next month we are going to have a special guest in studio um, to have a discussion along with me and i think you're going to be just shocked to see who it is uh, it's, this is a this is a really great person close personal friend of mine um, i've known for years and uh it's uh it's a she and a uh, very smart very intelligent lady and uh she's gonna she's really gonna wow you so I, I really hope you I really hope you tune in next month so uh, for now thanks for watching um, I hope you hope you enjoyed your episode of history quest and we'll see you again next month bye now Do a tight could you do a tiger noise to that? Put a little circle around me and <laughs> and then put HCVN on the bottom. <laughs>